Deputy Prime Minister Christopher Freeland and Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow are speaking to the media. Let's listen. Avec la mairesse, cet grand projet de construction de logements locatifs qui sera mis en œuvre un peu partout à Toronto dans le cadre de notre programme du prêt pour la construction d'appartements dans 2644 nouveaux logements locatifs. We also recognize the absolute importance of public transit for the city of Toronto. That's why we've committed $8.5 billion to Toronto for public transit projects. That includes funding for new Made in Canada streetcars. And the mayor and I were at announcement, it was just before Christmas, right? Um, uh, of those streetcars, we got to sit on them. They look really great. Um, also new electric buses um, for the TTC capacity improvements at Bloor Young Station, uh, so essential, in, and actually it's in my writing, funding to build the Ontario Line, the Scarborough Subway Extension, and the Eglinton Crosstown West Extension. So we believe in this city. We are here to support the City of Toronto, the people of Toronto. And I'm here to announce that we are providing further support. The federal government is investing $143 million through the Interim Housing Assistance Program to help Toronto provide housing for asylum seekers. And thank you very much to the Toronto MPs uh, and ministers who have worked so hard to get that support across the line and have advocated for it so effectively. Today's announcement is part of the $362.4 million in new funding for the Interim Housing Assistance Program that our Immigration Minister, Mark Miller, announced earlier this week. And it is in addition to the $97 million top-up our government announced to the IHAP program for the City of Toronto last July. Taken together, this support... There you have it, $143 million the for the IHAP program. Among other additional funding for the City of Toronto, we've been listening to Deputy Prime Minister Christopher Freeland. She'll be joined by Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow. Let's go live right now where uh, Olivia Chow, Toronto Mayor, and alongside uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, Christopher Freeland, are speaking to the media. Let's listen in. It was okay in the middle of the year. But the number of refugees claimants dramatically increased. Dramatically. It kept going up, doubling, tripling. To the extent that one out of two people seeking shelter here in Toronto are refugees claimants. So we went back to the government and said, please help, and said, yes, we'll do that. We will do that. And this is what we have today. It is a partnership. It is a, a commitment. It is um, the a commitment to say that working together, we can have a better city and a better country. So the federal government's commitment today means that on top of the 97 million, that we will receive 103 million, which make Toronto financial budget whole for refugees claimants, okay? That means they have fully delivered for Toronto. Now, recognizing that our fiscal years don't align, our starts in January, their starts in April. I just announced my budget. The, the finance minister, the deputy prime minister, probably will announce it in April, maybe. I, yeah, sometime there. We're not saying Spring. the date. Right? Okay, no, okay. I don't know the date. <laughs> March, April, May, whatever it is. Their fiscal year is different than ours. They're also providing forty million to support the first quarter of the city because they know our financial plight. They know it's a down payment. It's a commitment. And I am just so grateful. Now, people like Job 
And Victoria, that is his friend uh, that I met at Cuffinan House, they want to cook their own food. They want to have their own place to stay. They want independence. They want to start. And it's hard to do that when you're in a shelter. There's no kitchen. And what today's second announcement is all about, this Canada Ontario Housing Benefits, is to give 2,000 people a chance to find decent, permanent homes. It is a rent subsidy. It means that we will subsidize a bit of their income that they have, and then they can then go and rent a home themselves. So this benefit of 20 million almost towards uh, this Canada Benefit Program will help people move out of shelters into housing permanently. What does that mean? That means it's open up sh the shelter system for more people to come in. So no one have to sleep in a park, sleep in a, a Pearson, which is what Victoria did uh, in the airport. That's what I mean by providing hope and support for people that are most vulnerable. The federal government has been a great partner on this file, a great partner for Toronto. Now, I've, I've only been the mayor for eight months, I think, and, but I know they've been stepping up for Toronto, Torontonians for many years. Last December, I stood with the prime minister, uh, deputy prime minister, and uh, many of the members of parliament here where Housing Minister Sean Fraser announced half a billion dollars to build housing, building it faster, building a lot more. That will be, yes, yeah. we need a, a round of applause, absolutely. 53,000, in fact, uh, uh, number of homes. And um, that's part of the over $6 billion of housing fund this government has already provided for Toronto since 2015, six billion. They have also stepped up on transit. You've heard earlier about the electric bus and all the projects that we have uh, received and are receiving. In fact, I have a big list here. So and if any of you are interested, in, okay, it's a long list. Okay, you want to have lunch. Okay, I won't go into it. But in terms of public transit, it's $8.5 billion since 2015. Um, all the rapid transit lines. They've also helped with funding for heritage and culture, such as the Harborfront Center. So every time you go down to the waterfront, there's tons of activities there. And the city with Main Street recovery measures, supporting the local BIAs, so that when you go to the taste of everything everywhere, <laughs> that's what it is, isn't it? Lawrence, taste of Lawrence, taste of Jerk Fest, and taste of Little Italy, Danforth, et cetera. Um, that's partially supported by the federal government. Okay, I won't go down the list because it's uh, several pages. The city's and any media that are interested, I uh, do have it up. The city's partnership with the federal liberal government has helped the people of Toronto immensely. This government have come through for Toronto time and time again. And on behalf of the city of Toronto, we are very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Chow. Uh, the mayor is taking more questions from reporters. Let's listen in. Tremendously. Okay. War in Ukraine, um, etc. Right? A lot of African countries are facing wars, persecution of every kind. So this year's in 2023, it's 200 million. And what the federal announcement did today is to make us whole. We weren't counting on that 103, okay? Because we have, you mean. we do not have that 103. The original announcement was only 97 million. 
right? Which we need the other 103 to make. Do you mean make. 143? You keep saying 103. No, no, so 100, oh, okay. 103, yeah. Okay. So think about 2023. Okay. 2023, the city of Toronto spent 200 million. We got the first portion, 97. Today, we got 103 million, right? So we're made whole for 2023, last year. Their fiscal year ends in April. Their budget won't come until April. Our starts in January. The fiscal year is different. So the other announcement, it is the 40 million provides the first installment as a down payment for the 2024 budget, okay? Now, since last year, our entire cost was covered. Now, we also put in 35 million, housing 500 refugees, so we put our share. The provincial government also put in their share. This announcement unlocked the provincial government's shelter funds. It's under the New Deal. It also provides the first installment of this fiscal year for us, 2024, first quarter, which is why I am confident that this year, the coming year, 2024 budget, we will receive the IHAP program, right? Because the IHAP program has just been announced again. Because last year, it, it had a temporary stop for the first few months, and then it, it, it started again. Okay. So, which is why we said that, uh, I actually used the word. You're right, we used the word. They have fully delivered on what we asked for to help us support the thousands of refugees in Toronto shelter system. Right? It's written down, Minister. Um, so, does that help explain it? And on top of it, there's the housing benefits. And the housing benefits um, is an existing program. So far, since September of last year, we have helped moved 1,650 people, that's about 300 people a month, out of shelters and, to, and into homes using the Canada Ontario Housing Benefit. Okay. Now the federal government is coming in, it's called Canada Ontario Housing Benefit. They're coming in to say, here is another 20 million. We want to help 2,000 more people. Isn't that a great news? So what you're saying is the full 250 million that you were asking for is we'll accounted be, for. Yes, and so we, will, we will be getting the next four, three quarters later on the year because their fiscal year is different. Okay, but they've made a commitment to that. And then, so this means, just for property owners in Toronto, I think that's Take what we really want to know. Take a deep breath, still less than a dollar a day. So yes, yeah, so it's going to be <laughs> increased, committing yeah. to the nine and a half percent. It's not, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question, prochaine question. Just to be clear, there's no extra dollar here. It is still less than a dollar a day, okay, uh, in terms of property tax. Mark McAllister from City News. I will try not to complicate this further. I will ask the Deputy Prime Minister uh, a question somewhat related to the math. Okay. The, the mayor has called this a down payment in a number of different ways because of the fiscal years. This includes money up until the end of the first quarter. Anything beyond that at this point, you jokingly said you don't want to announce anything just yet. However... I, I said I'm not announcing the budget date. Okay. Because the mayor suggested a date, and I don't want to terrify the national press corps that, like, she was announcing it. We're not saying what the budget date is. Understood. But there will be a budget. Understood. The money announced today is to basically make up for everything that the, the city has had to pay over the course of this last fiscal year and the beginning of this year. Okay. So what goes on beyond that? Okay, well, thank you for the question. Um, and the mayor explained um, exactly what the support provided is. Um, so that is $200 million for calendar year 2023. 40 million for first quarter of 2024. Um, and on top of that, 20 million for the Canada Ontario housing benefit. So that's the support that we're announcing today. 
Um, going forward, um, I really emphasized, and it's important, and I think the mayor did too, um, that we have developed and are going to develop even more a really close, effective working partnership with the City of Toronto. Um, so we're going to work on this together. Uh, the mayor and I talked about, and she assured me, her commitment to making sure that the money is used as effectively and efficiently as possible. And since I saw for myself, uh, she makes sandwiches at home that she brings in little, uh, uh, yeah, in, in little Tupper, it's not quite, yeah, little Tupperwares. Um, I can assure you she is a frugal person. And we're gonna work hard together to be sure that the money that we've provided goes as far as possible and supports as many people as possible. That's why the housing benefit element is so important, because it's both better for a person and less expensive for us collectively if people can have a permanent place that they call home rather than be in the shelter system. The other thing I would say is you know, the mayor spoke about uh, an increase in the number of asylum seekers and how that is imposing strains on the city of Toronto. She's right. We know that as a country, we have a responsibility to care for the people who are already here in Canada, uh, to welcome them, to care for them in dignity, and to help them get the best possible start on their life here. It is also the case that as a federal government, we have a responsibility to control our borders and to control our immigration system. And there are loopholes right now. And you know that is something that Mark Miller, the Minister of Immigration, has spoken about. He, with the strong support of all of his cabinet and caucus colleagues, is working hard to close those loopholes. And you'll be hearing more about that in the days to come. Thanks. Thank you. A follow-up for the mayor. Yesterday, your budget included mention of sustainable funding for the shelter system in this city, not necessarily more in addition to what's already been in the budget. You said this potentially helps frees up some people that are in the shelter system now, but what more can be done to make things better beyond just freeing up some space? You will see in the city's budget that we are investing in building uh, and or leasing shelter space. Right now, in front of city council, you will see a list of hotels where we are paying each month tremendous amount of money. And we started it during the COVID times. Because during COVID times, the refugee shelter system, you have to have a lot more distancing between different beds. And because of more distances, as we need more space. And you can't just build space so quickly. So the city of Toronto during the pandemic rented a lot of hotel spaces, but that's expensive. The tourists are coming back to the city of Toronto especially when we have FIFA World Cup in 2026. So we want to free up those shelter spaces. It will help reduce the cost and actually moving some of the people that are living in, sh in these hotel rooms now into adequate shelters that perhaps there are ways that they can transition them into housing. So it's a continuum of from shelters to housing, right? And it's much better way because when that happens, we don't have to cook for them. You don't have the food costs. They want to be independent. Right now, we just don't have a space for them to become independent because of all those hotel rooms. And we can't just push 300 people out of a hotel, for example, or hotel rooms because where are they going to go, right? So the transition period is going to be not easy, but we're committed to doing it. You're seeing it in front of the capital budget that has uh, the city investing in 
per, you know, building more shelters or uh, supportive housing also. Thank you. Okay. Next question, prochaine question. Hi, Matthew Bingley from Global News uh, for the Deputy Prime Minister. We've been listening to Mayor Olivia Chow alongside some other federal officials speaking to the media, answering a lot of questions about uh, budgets and um, money that uh, the city is receiving from the federal government to deal with uh, the ongoing situation with asylum uh, seekers and refugees.